In this video, I will show you a real world web design web development case study, a portfolio project we did for an actual client. Hi there, my name is Kabarza. I own a web design and web flow development agency. We do work for clients and in this new series, I want to share these client projects with you, like a case study series where we go from everything, how I got the client all the way to the process of the design and any technical or non-technical challenges we might have along the way. All right, about how I got the client, there is not much about it. He reached out to me on LinkedIn, especially I think because I've been posting again on LinkedIn frequently. We already knew each other, so it wasn't like a new connection. I've been working uh, with his colleagues and we started messaging and got on a call and he shared this with me that I'm going to show you. We are on Figma, but he, he made this in Miro and shared his idea. So the idea was to have a one page portfolio with these three, as you see, like kind of like pictures section for the, for the hero section. The idea was that these pictures should rotate kind of like a slider on auto rotate and the text would also change with each, with each picture. But I mentioned that this is probably not the best, um, approach, especially for a hero section because people usually don't stick around to look at a rotating slider. They don't also look at rotating um, text. I'm not a big fan of it's typewriter text, I believe. I'm not a big fan of it because people don't stick around to watch uh, to watch the animation to uh, to finish. They want to get on the page and know what this page is about, for who it is, what do you do, things like that. So I explained everything and he right away got it and he was on board. He was like, okay, this was just my initial idea. Let's go with something better. Now let's proceed with the other two sections before I show you the design. He also mentioned that he wants to provide these two services. And this one, the last item is not a service. It's, it's just a value, but it looks like, you know, the rest. So this is something that is our job as designers to look at the content, understand it, uh, and not just design what is there roughly, but actually understand the context and design for that. So I mentioned that we should separate this. He was completely on board and I agreed and was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And then we had this part where he said, I don't know, but I need some logos of past clients, my picture, contact, things like this. So this is not like a design. He was just trying to communicate with me everything that he needs. And let me just take a moment and say, this is like perfect communication from a client. It's about as good as it gets, especially, especially for, you know, an early idea for somebody who is not building websites, right? It's not his job. So communicating on this level was already great. Uh, it's a good starting point for us. Uh, I started on Miro to help him get, you know, a layout like this. So we were just a bit more visual about it. Again, this is not design. It's just like, just to get it, uh, get, get a better understanding of it. And here comes the design. So after agreeing on the text and on the overall approach for the layout, we started designing different hero sections. And this is where this is how our process goes for a one page landing page. We typically design different versions of a hero page, a hero section. So we get a better understanding of the direction because we do this, we show it to the client and we get feedback. And then based on the feedback, we design the rest. So as you see, we have a var variety of designs with images of these uh, mountains in the background. And here I, frankly forgot uh, an important part and that is about the look and feel the brand and we e exactly established that here he already had that in mind he wanted because of the name of the company he wanted this peak and mountainous uh, pictures but uh, he also had like these other inform uh, types of pictures so I said let's stick with the mountains 
And for the type and overall feel, let's go with something like Patagonia. I don't know if you know the brand or not. It's a, like an outdoor sport brand. We decided to go with that kind of feel. So that's how the design came to be. What you see on the screen, they are uh, being, you know, the ideas are coming from Patagonia and brands similar to Patagonia. All right. So you see in some of them, we don't have his pictures. In some we have. Uh, we very quickly noticed that when I say we, like in the agency with my team, we, we liked the ones with his picture and he also like, uh, liked the ones with his picture. So we knew that we want to go with one of these uh, options and that's what, we, that's what he chose. And we just basically expanded on that idea with his picture. Let's look at this one with his picture with uh, this type of headings. And you see there are like many variations with small differences uh, in, in terms of where things are like in, in the layout. You see also this part that I mentioned earlier is separated. You see it clearly and above all, it kind of has a tag. And these are like elements of design you use to separate a content from the rest. Uh, so we did that and here we have some versions for his about uh, in his about section. Let me show you the last design. So this is kind of uh, the the final design. You see here we have kind of this container with these clouds. We already had the idea of if I can select them, we had the idea of uh, animating the clouds. I'll show you in Webflow. And yeah, here we added this kind of sec this section with this quote which was kind of like a small challenge, a technical challenge I'll show you in Webflow. And this footer that is a sticky footer, I'll show you that. But yeah, the idea we already had it when we were designing. So this is important to know, like when in the process did you have the idea for animation? So we already knew that we want the footer to be sticky. We want this text uh, to be kind of like, um, a marquee text, a text that kind of like moves. And then, yeah, with the with the clouds, obviously we wanted to animate them. We don't do mobile design for, you know, every section, every page, but for pages and sections that might be a bit challenging, that are not a clear, you know, stack on top of each other uh, type of section, we do actually do mobile design and we also show like how it should behave in different sizes. So you see that there. All right. So that's the Figma. And we have a few other op uh, options and variations, but I showed you straight the, the one that the client went with, but you see there are a, a bunch of other options, which we are not going to throw away. This is a topic for another video, but the idea is we explore these designs and we might decide to create templates based on those ex explorations that we didn't end up using. I know I went on a tangent, but yeah, that's a topic for another idea. Let me know if you're interested in. All right, now let me show you the Webflow build and also the animations. So here we are in the Webflow project. Let's preview it actually. Uh, so here you see the clouds are actually moving. They are coming on the text a little bit, but they are not covering it too much. And by the way, the text is still completely selectable. This is important. These little details are important, especially for this button. We don't want the, the cloud to cover the button in a way that users can't click it. And the way you do it is just by using event none on the clouds natively available in Webflow. The same for this one. And also the responsiveness, if I make the screen smaller, you see this is pretty responsive and even across other devices. And yeah, I, I see on mobile portrait, this text is not fully responsive. This is something I'm going to fix after the video. All right, so the first challenge we had here was how to make the spacing like from here to the bottom of the page equal to the one on uh, as like the top. I actually have a video that I'm mentioning this using calc 
and variables in Webflow, you can do this. Um, I'll make sure to link that video in the description below. So I'm not going into that, but that was something important for us to do. Also the animations, as you see here, we have some real, like really nice, tiny animations. And the idea was to make these animations also feel like at home on brand with the rest, especially that we didn't have like a crazy branding session, strategy, etc. We we built this so much like so quick in a week. And all of this, what you see is kind of like just happened naturally without going into too much details. But we definitely um, paid attention to these details. And I think these are important. Let me uh, show the rest also in preview. You see these lines are also uh, animated. The idea is to not animate too much, but these can help the reader's eye to you know pay attention to the text and also guide it. Uh, we scroll here. You see we have this quote. I'll show you something really cool about it. If I make the screen smaller, you see the text. The actual text is being uh is being very responsive it gets smaller and bigger depending on the screen it stops getting bigger at this at this part of the screen so here if the screen grows the text stays the same it's not like filling the entire screen again i have the same video in the same video that i just mentioned i have the tutorial for this uh, i'm pretty excited about you know using as I, I'll show you in a second. I'm pretty excited uh, about using container type and CQW for the size of the font. If you don't know any of these, I'm covering it all in that video. Another cool thing that I used in this project for the first time was, let me grab the actual item here. Uh, I used inline flex. So the difference between flex and inline flex is if I use flex here, this block takes the entire space. It cannot sit in line with the rest of the text, but inline flex, which is a new uh, feature in Webflow, it does allow us to do this. And you see, I use a flex because I'm aligning it to the center center. And then this cross line that you see is just a div block that is positioned to absolute. So a tiny bit of uh, detail here. We really care about these like level of um, yeah details. And most of this project, by the way, was built by one of my teammates and designed by another teammate. Uh, I just got my hand in here. That's why I'm explaining it also separately. Uh, we also have this line and you might be asking, how the user, how can the client update it? This is a Webflow component. It's really important to go through the project as you build it, especially towards the end of it, and make sure that from the editing mode and from the editor, or maybe in total, both of these together, the client can update everything. Uh, so this is pretty important that they are not reliant on us. Uh, they can do it themselves. And by the end of the project, I always, not just for this client, I always make Loom videos. I just send it to the client and the Looms are based on their project. It's not like a general Loom. It's about their project. I go in and I just show them how they can edit everything. As you see, the footer is uh, sticky and the footer is also, it has all these properties. So the client can basically change everything here. And if we preview it, you see this is pretty nice. And this like uh, this email has this copy button that you can click. And by clicking it, it copies this email to your clipboard. So you can paste it in in whatever tool that you need. And uh, you write the email that way. Also this 24, 2024, we are updating this with uh, a piece of code. If you're interested in any of these things that I mentioned, feel free to comment below so I can make a video about it. But so far, you see the project is not huge, but it has enough details. It has like custom codes here and there. It has 
you know, some advanced features of Webflow, like the CQW that I showed you. Uh, it doesn't have CMS, but it it does have quite like enough, I would say, um, like advanced uh, things that we used here that are probably not as, you know, uh, you wouldn't see them at the first glance if you would look at this project. It looks like very, very small, uh, very simple. But yeah, uh, each project comes with a little bit of detail. So I know the entire theme for this has been these details. And I think it is important. That's what makes a good website a good website, uh, you know, paying attention to all of these responsive details, animation details, making sure that it's also going to um, do what it should do for the client. It's communicating what it should communicate for the end users or like the visitors of the website. All right, so as you see, most of this has been about details, these small things about animations, responsiveness, making it user accessible. All of this together make a good website a good one. Uh, so I would love to engage with you in the comments and know what do you think about this type of videos? This is the first one and by far the smallest project we've done in the past two years. Uh, we have much bigger projects all the way from agency work to enterprise level. And I would love to share them with you, but I need to know what type of things are you interested in? Um, not just the pure technical, you know, web flow tutorials, but anything in between. So I would love to engage with you. Please let me know in the comments. I'll put them in consideration and try to make the next video and the next one better and better each time. Thank you so much for watching and until the next one, peace.